Welcome to the Pingplotter tutorial series. This episode, we'll show you how to navigate through the different parts of Pingplotter so you can get started finding network problems quickly. We're assuming you've already downloaded and installed Pingplotter, and if you haven't, there are some instructions available in the description. To get started, we'll enter the address of something we've been experiencing issues with, and then click the trace button. We want to collect as much data as we can, so it's best to let Pingplotter run for at least 10 minutes, but preferably longer. Pingplotter generates route information in the trace graph, which displays information on each device, or hop, between us and our target. All of the statistics here are based off of the focus time value. So, for example, if this is set to 5 minutes, then all of the stats are based on the last 5 minutes worth of data. If set to auto, then all of the stats are actually based off of anything that's viewable in the timeline graph. Additional stat columns can be added or removed by right-clicking on any column. The timeline graph visualizes our trace data. Latency is represented by a black line, while packet loss is represented by a vertical red line. To open additional timeline graphs, just double-click on a hop, or use the option in the right-click menu. We can use these same actions to close down the graphs as well. We can change the amount of time shown on a graph by right-clicking on it. And navigating is easy. Just click and drag the graph back and forth. To return to the current time, right-click and select Reset Focus to Current. Double-clicking on a timeline graph will bring up a focus area, which will focus the upper graph to that point in time. This focus area is also defined by the focus time value. We can share our data with other Pingplotter users by exporting it as a PP2 file. And if we're needing to share with non-Pingplotter users, there are also options available to export as an image or a text file. And that should be everything you need to know to find your way around Pingplotter. For more information on how to start finding network problems, be sure to check out our step-by-step -step troubleshooting guide on pingplotter.com.